You've been in the industry now. You started your advertising career th three decades ago. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> if pressed, could you ever have divined the future as it is now? Oh, no. I, I mean, absolutely not. No. I, as a matter of fact, the job I had before we started Mindshare, which was 15 years ago now, was I was running a full-service advertising agency in the old model, mm -hmm. resolutely defending that model, resolutely declaring that the media agency trend would never take off. Yeah. You know, so I was, I was fundamentally wrong. I was just totally wrong. So let's talk about those changes. You yeah. know, what has happened and sort of why is that creating this need for the media business, media agencies to really evolve and sort of adapt? Yeah, well, it, it's basically just down to the complication of the media landscape. Yeah. I mean, that's really it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, 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 the way of trying to find an audience has become as important as the as the content of the message that gets to the audience. Sure. You know, it's, it's just, that's the basically the, the reason why media agencies um, started mm -hmm. and became more and more successful mm -hmm. and more trusted partners to the clients because that skill in being able to make sense of the chaos mm -hmm. is just really become very important. So that means necessarily that you need to have technology capability yeah. as well as talent yeah. um, capability. So how are you meeting both of those challenges? Yeah, well, that's a tough one because you're right. We, we, we have um, a very broad spectrum of talent in our, in our agencies. Mm -hmm. you know, we have scientists who are sitting next to artists in the same teams, on the same client teams. Mm -hmm. you know, on the one hand, coming up with very uh, um, data-rich marketing programs and return on investment analyses. And on the other hand, the guy next to them on the desk will be coming up with big content ideas or mm -hmm. ideas for new advertiser-funded programs or whatever it might cool. be. So we have, a very broad, we have a very broad talent base now in the, in the business. And you're arguably competing for the same talent that the clients are competing for, that yes. other creative agencies are competing for. Um, you know, that becomes a, a unique challenge in and of itself, this talent imperative. Yeah, it's true to say that there is a sort of overlap between what the clients do, what media agencies do, what creative agencies mm -hmm. do, what public relations agencies do, mm -hmm. what consultancies do. There are some gray areas which we're all involved in. Right. And yeah, I would, I would agree with you, the war for talent the, the, the battle for talent um, is quite broad now. We're fighting it on many fronts. Mm -hmm. So what's attractive? How do you work to get that talent? And sort of why would somebody choose to work at a media agency? As I think agencies other, have always options. been and still are a really kind of interesting environment to work in. Mm -hmm. We tend to attract people who are maybe sometimes a little bit maverick, <laughs> um, who want to work in that kind of you know, creative uh, environment. I think yeah. that's probably very important, right? And being hands-on to all the, on all the changes that are taking place. I mean, and being absolutely be, hands-on, yeah. and uh, you know, leading the old dinosaurs like me into <laughs> uh, you know into the into this into this new age. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, the talent base is very young. Yes, it's very mobile, mm -hmm. less loyal. Yeah, uh, they move around a lot more. They set the pace. You know, you know the younger generation in the um, agencies are those that are, you know, are digital natives. Sure, grew up with it. Yeah, know what to do. Yeah. Let's talk about procurement and the, and the pressures of cost containment. How is that going to continue to transform the media business as well? Well, uh, I mean, what you say is right. I mean, I think the, the downward pressure on costs from the CEO's office all the way down through the business mm -hmm. is, is huge for all clients in all sectors. I mean, that's not going to go away. So the challenge for us, and arguably for all uh, different types of agencies, sure is to make sure that we're doing the very best job in the procurement area, being as efficient as we possibly can be with the client's dollar. But, and here's the crucial thing, <laughs> not losing sight of the fact that what they really employ us for, as well as that, is to add value and ideas and thinking and strategy. Mm -hmm. And if we go too far down the first, the first route mm -hmm. of, of just being driven by procurement into a commoditized pricing model, then we will lose value in the client's mind because we won't be adding the value that they also want. There is a danger that that you end up valuing things that you can most accurately measure. You know, you could argue that you'd rather be precisely wrong than roughly correct. <laughs> Absolutely. That would be a huge mistake. Yes. 
So what can we expect to see as far as continued changes? Um, understanding that this pressure isn't going away. Um, how do you see the media landscape further evolving and changing? There will be more and more investment in technology. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one, the, the reason why we're happy to be the market leader in terms of market share is because that affords us the ability to invest in, in technology mm. and research. Mm -hmm. And that, that we think is crucial. That, that, that's absolutely crucial because it, technology will in part make us more efficient um, as a business, but also help us on behalf of the clients to find the best route to market uh, every time. So I think you know, ours is a very data intense, research intense, technology intense business, which will only become more intense as we, as we go forward. Mm -hmm.